Okay, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce Professor Jose from the University of Granada. It's a general hub theorem for immersed spheres in three manifolds. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks, Andetan. Uh, well, first, uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for the op opportunity to give uh, a talk at this workshop, in special to Asum. I'm going to talk about the general of type theorem for immersed spheres in three manifolds. And this is a joint work with uh, Pablo Mira. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the spheres and in this theory, uh, an introduction. Uh, uh, there are many results uh, where the index theory has been used in order to characterize the sphere of a class of surfaces. And probably the most uh, famous one is the Hopf theorem, which classifies the round spheres as the unique immersed uh, constant mean curvature spheres in the Euclidean tree space. The key point in this result is to show the system of a certain holomorphic quadratic to form, depending on the second fundamental form of the surface. This form uh, must uh, vanish identically on, on the sphere because otherwise uh, the form can only vanish in a finite number of points with negative index at these points. Uh, which contradicts uh, the poincare uh, hopf theorem. This holomorphic quadratic form is uh, obviously the, the so-called uh, Hopf differential after, after this result. Well, uh, the Hopf uh, theorem is not uh, only true in the Euclidean 3 space, but also in the sphere or the hyperbolic 3 space. Uh, another central result in the theory of constant mean curvature surfaces is the average uh, Rosenberg uh, uh, result, the uh, theorem, which shows that the immersed spheres with constant mean curvature in the product spaces H2 cross R and S2 cross R must be uh, rotational. Uh, again, uh, for the proof, they obtain a holomorphic quadratic form in this case, given by the Hopf differential uh, plus another term depending on the height function. And so the index theory uh, can be used again uh, 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 as in the previous theorem in order to show that uh, this uh, differential must vanish identically. They uh, also average uh, uh, Rosenberg also extended this result to the rest of rest of homogeneous spaces with a group of isometries of dimension four. Well, uh, the index theory can be also uh, used uh, for the classification of uh, spheres with positive constant uh, extrinsic curvature. That is uh, the, spheres, uh, the spheres such that the product of its uh, principal curvatures is constant. In this sense, Lipman proved that the complete uh, positive constant curvature surfaces in the Euclidean three space are round spheres. His proof was independent on the, uh, of the index theory, but a proof using the, the index theory can be given as Klotz Milner uh, showed. This result is also true uh, for the three sphere and the hyperbolic three space. For the product spaces, H2 cross R and S2 cross R, uh, it was uh, also proved by Spinar, Rosenberg, and I that the rotational spheres are the unique, complete, positive, constant, extrinsic uh, surfaces. In fact, uh, this result uh, was extended by Abigail Foya and Carlos Peñafiel for surfaces in these product spaces where a linear combination between the intric intrinsic and extrinsic curvatures of the surface is constant. Okay, uh, the index theory uh, 
has also uh, been used uh, for the classification of elliptic Wingarten surface, uh, surfaces. Uh, spheres. Uh, an elliptic Wingarten surface is a surface such that its mean, its mean curvature and uh, extrinsic curvature H and K satisfy a relation W HK equal to zero, where the ellipticity condition is given by uh, uh, the fact that the product of the derivative of the functional W with respect to its principal curvature, uh, the product is positive. Uh, Hermann and Winder uh, proved that an elliptic Wingarten sphere in the Euclidean three space must be a round sphere. But in general, the index uh, theory uh, uh, has been used uh, has uh, used has been used for the classification of uh, the sphere of a certain class of surfaces in many uh, many times. For instance, uh, it has been it was used for an isotropic uh, constant mean curvature, surface with a, a sphere with a, an isotropic constant mean curvature. Also for uh, for proving a uniqueness of uh, of alloys with sky curvatures and uh, many other uh, uh, cases. Now in our talk, uh, our objective uh, is to give a general result in order to classify the spheres of certain classes of surfaces that in particular uh, contains all the previous results. The, the, the idea for doing this uh, is the, the following. Uh, is a uh, to obtain a general uh, the idea for obtaining a general half type result is uh, to substitute the ambient space in the in the previous theorems that was R three H two cross R etc for an uh, for an arbitrary three manifold. We also uh, substitute the equation satisfied by the class of surfaces in the previous theorems for an arbitrary elliptic PDE. Sorry, another. Okay, on each uh, tangent plane. And also we are, we are going to substitute uh, the characterized spheres in the previous results, from a sphere or rotational spheres, depending on the case. Now we uh, substitute these uh, surfaces uh, for certain candidate uh, surfaces that uh, we will uh, explain a little. Okay, uh, we consider uh, an arbitrary C3 manifold, M3, and choose a point P in, in the manifold and an oriented plane Pi in the tangent space of uh, the manifold. Okay, in a neighborhood of, of, P, of P in M3, we will consider uh, a second order elliptic PDE, phi, okay, for local graph over pi. And we will denote by A the class of immersed oriented surfaces in the manifold satisfying the elliptic PDE in each tangent plane. For instance, in the classical Hopf theorem, M, the manifold, in this case, is the Euclidean three space. The PDE phi is the PDE corresponding to surfaces of constant mean curvature. And uh, of course, the class of the surfaces A is, are the solution of the equation that means that uh, the class A is given by all the uh, surfaces with constant mean curvature. 
in the Euclidean three space. Uh, we will say in this case that uh, the uh, family A is modeled by the, the differential equation uh, the elliptic PDE phi. Okay. Uh, in the class uh, A, uh, in the class of the surfaces that we are considering, we will consider a family of surfaces where the spheres that we want to classify are included. For that, uh, we define the concept of a transitive family. In general, given a family S of immersed uh, oriented uh, surfaces in the three manifold, we say that S is a transitive family if uh, the following is satisfied. For every point in the manifold, and every oriented plane pi in its tangent uh, space. Here in the picture, it, we have a point pi, the p, and, uh, and a plane pi oriented following this direction. Uh, uh, there must uh, exist a unique immersed uh, surface in the family and a unique point in the surface whose tangent play, plane is exactly pi. This is a picture. We have a surface S in the, in the family such that uh, is passing across uh, P with tangent plane at P equal to, to pi. Uh, for another point, P prime and another uh, tangent plane or another plane, pi prime, there exists another unique uh, surface in the family S with tangent plane pi prime at P prime. We will also assume that the surfaces in the family S vary uh, very uh, smoothly in the class uh, C3 when the plane pi uh, varies. Let us see uh, some example of transitive uh, families, families uh, which will be uh, useful uh, later. Consider an ovaloid S, as we can see here in the picture, and all its translations in the Euclidean three space. This is a transitive uh, family because uh, given a point, consider here a point and an oriented plane with this orientation. There is a, a unique translation of the this ovaloid S such that uh, uh, the uh, translation is a tangent to the plane at this point. Uh, this is a, an example of transitive families. Uh, another example following the same uh, ideas is uh, uh, can, uh, are planes in the uh, Euclidean three space. Also, can, uh, can be also can be considered horospheres in the hyper, hyperbolic three space, or in general for a space form. Uh, uh, geodesic spheres of a fixed radius. Another example of a transitive uh, family can be given by a strictly uh, convex graph over a disk. Here we have a picture. We are, here we have a disk. We consider a strictly convex graph over the, the disk. Uh, in such a way that uh, the graph is asymptotic to the cylinder given by the boundary of the disk cross R. This is the, here uh, it is the cylinder. If we consider this surface and its refle reflection with respect to a horizontal plane and also this cylinder, 
And now we consider all the translation of these uh, three surfaces, they constitute a, a transitive family in the Euclidean tree space. Also, in, in other uh, manifold, similar construction are possible. For instance, uh, when M is a general homogeneous uh, three manifolds, three manifold, uh, using the translation of the ambient space. Okay, uh, with all of this, uh, we can give uh, the general half uh, type result. The first, uh, consider a class A of immersed oriented surfaces in a general three manifold, M. And now assume that uh, this class A satisfies uh, uh, the following conditions. First, A is modeled by an NFT PDE. Okay, uh, on each tangent plane. And also, uh, in this family A, there exists a transitive family. So, if uh, these two conditions are satisfied, then any immersed sphere of the class of the class A must belong to the transitive family. For instance, in the classical uh, half theorem, uh, the class A, this class A is simply uh, uh, the surfaces in the Euclidean space with constant mean curvature uh, H. And the transitive family is given by the round spheres with uh, this curvature, this mean curvature H, and uh, all the translation. Observe that these uh, results say that in this case, any immersed sphere must be uh, a sphere of the transitive family. And the transitive family is only made uh, by the, uh, the wrong sphere. So the results say that only a wrong sphere are possible in the class of CMC surfaces in the Euclidean sphere space. Okay, uh, obviously uh, this result uh, can be also used uh, uh, for the case of, uh, of the result of Average and Rosenberg. In the result, the, the class again is the CMC sphere in the product space is H2 cross R or S2 cross R. And the transitive family is given by the rotational examples and its translation in H2 cross R and S2 cross R. And the same uh, can be done for the rest of theorems in the introduction. Uh, this uh, general theorem can, can generalize in some sense uh, the the theorem that I, I gave in the introduction. Uh, also, uh, it should be observed that we are considering a transitive family, but observe that uh, it is possible to have a transitive family where there is no sphere in the transitive family. In this case, when there is no transitive, uh, uh, well, when in the transitive family there is no sphere, then this result is a result of a non-existence. The result would say that there is no uh, immersed sphere in the class A. Okay, uh, before uh, the proof of the result, I would like uh, to remark that uh, this result generalizes uh, previous uh, this result is not only uh, good for generalized previous uh, one, previous results for general three manifold, but has also consequences in R3. Uh, for instance, consider uh, the class of surfaces in R3 with prescribed mean curvature in terms of its unit normal. This means that uh, we consider a function h 
on the sphere s2 this function uh, uh, depending on any point of the sphere okay and consider uh, now the class of surfaces in r3 such that its mean curvature depend on on its normal in such a way that for a point such that the for two different points with the same normal the mean curvature at this point corresponds to this prescribed mean curvature so this kind of surfaces are called a uh, surfaces with prescribed mean curvature depending on its uh, unit normal okay in this situation one and one uh, prove that if the prescribed function h this function h on the sphere uh, satisfies this condition this means that h is symmetric with respect uh, to the origin and positive then there is it uh, there is it, uh, an ovaloid such that its mean curvature the mean curvature of the ovaloid uh, corresponds to the prescribed function so uh, if this condition i have to say that in general for uh, for a, a mean curvature prescribed on the sphere there is no uh, compact surface satisfying uh, the condition but in this case when the mean curvature is uh, symmetric and positive then uh, there is it a uh, 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 ovaloid uh, uh, ovaloid satisfying the condition as a consequence of uh, this result and the, the general half type result, we obtain that uh, the one one sphere, uh, if we consider uh, the an immersive sphere in the Euclidean three space with prescribed mean curvature H satisfying this symmetric condition, then sigma, the immersive sphere, must be uh, the one one sphere. Uh, <clears throat> the idea here is the same where uh, the class of uh, surfaces A that we are considering is given by all the spheres in R3 with prescribed mean curvature and the transitive uh, family is given by the one one sphere and all its uh, translation. The the uniqueness uh, for the sphere sigma in the theorem was also known only in the case where sigma is another ovaloid, but not in uh, general for every immersed sphere. Okay, uh, now I'm going to explain uh, the idea of the of the proof. I'm going to give only a sketch of the proof. Okay, uh, first uh, we start with the class of surface A. We start with, the, with this class. Um, this class is modeled by an elliptic PDE. And uh, we uh, fix uh, an immersed sphere sigma. Here in the picture, uh, sigma is in black. This is a, a piece of, uh, of the immersed sphere. For every point P in the, in the sphere sigma, we consider the unique surface in the transitive family. Using the definition of transitive family, there is a unique surface in the family such that it's tangent to sigma at the point P. Okay, so uh, we consider this, and now denote by two uh, to the second fundamental form of the image sphere, and we define the smooth tensor given by a sigma equal to the second fundamental form of the uh, 
immersed sphere minus at every uh, at any point p the second fundamental form of the tangent uh, surface at the uh, in the transitive family at this point i mean we consider uh, here in the picture you can see the surface uh, the immersed sphere sigma for every point here p1 we consider the unique uh, tangent uh, uh, surface in the transitive family at P1, and we consider the, dif uh, the difference between the second fundamental form of sigma and the second fundamental form of this surface at P1. But for another point, for instance, here in, at, in the picture P2, we are considering the second fundamental form of sigma minus the second fundamental form at this point of this other uh, uh, surface in the transitive family that is tangent to sigma at p2. We are this uh, term lambda depend on the point. We are considering the second fundamental form at each point or of uh, different surfaces of the transitive family. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, what is this in the case of the classical Hopf theorem? For the classical Hopf theorem, uh, we, are, uh, we were considering uh, the second fundamental form of the sphere minus uh, the second fundamental form of, uh, of uh, the round spheres. In the case of uh, the classical Hopf theorem, all the uh, elements, all the surfaces in the transitive family is in fact the same up to a translation, they are round sphere. So this term is uh, the real part of the Hopf differential. This is the real part of the Hopf differential. <clears throat> but in general, for, for our class, we are considering this difference. Okay, from the definition of the tensor uh, sigma, it is clear that uh, the tensor sigma vanishes identically on every surface in the transitive family. For our immersed sphere uh, sigma, the tensor vanishes at a point in Q if and only if the sigma, the immersed sphere sigma, and the corresponding surface in the transitive family have a constant of order at least two at the point. Observe that uh, the difference here depends on second derivative. This is the second fundamental form that depends on second derivative. If this uh, vanishes, mean that the second derivative, in some sense, the second derivative of uh, both surfaces are the same. They mean, this is really, uh, really mean that uh, they have, the surfaces have a constant of order at least two. Okay, uh, the idea is to show that uh, the tensor sigma only vanishes at a finite number of points. And see, uh, the tensor sigma is a Lorentzian, Lorentzian metric out of these points. We will have that sigma vanishing at, at a certain set of points. It will be finite. It will be finite and in the rest, uh, sigma is a Lorentzian metric. Observe that uh, they uh, sigma vanish when k is bigger than two, or two or bigger than two. Okay. Uh, when sigma uh, when sigma does not vanish, this is the case, the the case when k is equal to one. Uh, we have an intersection between the immersed sphere and its tangent one for of the transitive family, similar to these pictures. This uh, this picture is uh, more or less the uh, the intersection between the 
immerse sphere sigma locally of course of the immerse uh, uh, sphere sigma and the element in the transitive family that it is tangent at the point q uh, this is two different views this is from above there are uh, as you can see in these cases there are two lines there are two lines of intersection corresponding to the null uh, direction of the tensor sigma in this case sigma is a Lorentzian metric and there are two uh, null directions these uh, lines cor correspond at the point q uh, to the null direction of the tensor when the tensor sigma vanishes at the point q the intersection gives uh, more than two lines crossing at q here in, the, in this example k is equal to three and you can see uh, well two, two picture of the same example and uh, the important fact that is that in, in the day cross there are more than three uh, three or more than three a line crossing uh, at uh, the point Q. Okay, in order to uh, to control the behavior of the tensor sigma, okay, we uh, we fix uh, a point Q in our immersed sphere sigma, and we write uh, the difference of uh, of the definition of sigma in this form uh, and we we are going i'm going to explain uh, and we will uh, study in a separate uh, way this uh, this two uh, sum uh, in the picture we will uh, we will see we can uh, write uh, here we have the point q we we have here the tangent plane at q and um, for a point different from q we consider we have to consider the difference between sigma is given by the the difference between the second uh, fundamental form between uh, our surface sigma and the fam the tangent uh, surface in the uh, transitive family that it is here in blue but uh, we we will do this computation uh, doing the following we will consider the difference between when it is seen as graph the difference between the surface in black and the surface in red this is the first term we consider the difference between the second fundamental forms and later the difference between the second fundamental form of the surface s in red and the surface in blue this is the second term and we are going to estimate in a separately way uh, both uh, terms. Okay, uh, as in the previous picture, we can choose uh, local parameters in the three manifold M uh, such that the immersed surface, the uh, immersed sphere sigma, and the tangent surface in the transitive family at QS can be uh, parameter parameterized in a neighborhood neighborhood of the point Q in this way, such that the origin correspond to the point Q and the gradient at the origin is uh, uh, vanishes. This is the, the example. This will be considered the point Q uh, in local coordinate will be the origin, the coordinate, and uh, the tangent plane is horizontal at this point. Okay, uh, for a general graph, uh, psi star written as u, v, and the height function h star, we will denote by e, f, and g. Uh, the coefficient of it, uh, its second fundamental form. A standard computation gives that the coefficient e can be compute as a certain smooth function f e 
okay, uh, depending on the coordinates of the immersion, U, V, H star, the first derivative, and only uh, on depending on only on the second derivative with respect uh, to the height function with respect to u twice okay well uh, similar functions uh, can be given for uh, the coefficient f and g of the second fundamental form in this uh, local coordinates so we, we can use uh, the mean value theorem for the function for this function fe and we obtain that the well for this function e and for the function define the height function h and h naught defining to our immersive sphere sigma and the tangent uh, surface in the transitive family S and we obtain that the difference has uh, this form where the functions F uh, E are smooth. The same of course is uh, happens for F and G. Then under these uh, conditions we, <clears throat> we can use Verth theorem since H and H naught are solutions of the same uh, second order uh, elliptic PDE. Observe that uh, both surfaces uh, are in the in the class of surfaces A that are given by a uh, second order elliptic PDE. So uh, we obtain that both surfaces must agree the height functions agree or the difference between the height functions of both surfaces is given by a harmonic polynomial of degree at least two plus, plus high order terms at the origin. Okay, using this and the previous formula, this previous formula, Bear in mind that this coefficient at the origin is equal to one. Uh, we obtain that the matrix of the difference between the second fundamental forms of the uh, immersed sphere sigma and its tangent surface at Q S is given by the Hessian of the homogeneous harmonic polynomial plus high order terms. Uh, something similar can be done for the for the blue part here uh, uh, for the tensor sigma, and we can obtain that uh, the the difference between the second fundamental forms here uh, are given by high order terms or high order than uh, k k minus two. So we Using in all of these, we have that the tensor sigma uh, vanishes identically, and this means that the both surfaces agree, the immersed surface and the surface in the transitive family, or if not, uh, that the, the tensor sigma is given around the point Q in this form. This means as the Hessian of a harmonic homogeneous polynomial plus a high order terms. Okay, so in the second case, when sigma, uh, the, the tensor sigma uh, does not vanish identically, then we, we have as the Hessian of a harmonic function only vanishes in a set of isolated points, six sigma is a Laurentian metric on our immersed sphere F set for a finite uh, number of points. So uh, now we can use a uh, harmonicity of, of the 
are of the uh, homo uh, of the homogeneous polynomial p, and we obtain that the index of the null line fields of sigma is negative at every singularity. But uh, this contradicts the classical uh, Poincaré half uh, index theorem because the sum of the indices of the of a uh, of the indices in a sphere sigma should be two the Euler characteristic of the sphere but this is impossible because the index at every point is negative so the the unique possibility is the is that the tensor uh, sigma vanishes identically and so our immersed sphere uh, agrees with the with the surface of the transitive family. This is more or less uh, the idea of the of the proof. Uh, now uh, let us see uh, uh, a couple of uh, consequences of the result. For instance, uh, the characterization of a uh, or geodesic spheres in general uh, three manifolds. Consider uh, M a three manifold with a positive injectivity radius R. Here uh, R could be plus infinity. Now fix a positive constant uh, R naught less than R and consider the family of all geodesic spheres in uh, the three manifold M. Uh, it is easy to see that this family is a transitive uh, family. Consider uh, in the picture, consider a point P and uh, a plane P at P with the unit normal eta. In order to see that it is a transitive family, we, we need to show that there is a unique uh, geodesic sphere that it is tangent to this plane at P. Okay, for that, it is very, this is very easy. We can consider the geodesic uh, uh, starting at the point P in the direction of the unit uh, normal eta. And we can go along the geodesic uh, to a distant R0. And this is the center of the geodesic sphere that uh, we are looking for. So this is the, the sphere. And obviously there is only one uh, geodesic sphere that it is tangent uh, at this point P. Okay, uh, so uh, given uh, a unit ver vector eta uh, at a point P in the in the three manifold, we can define the function H, the function H in terms of the unit normal eta as the mean curvature of the unique geodesic sphere with unit normal eta at P. Uh, for every eta normal. We consider the unique sphere as a geodesic sphere that it is tangent with a radius R0. And we consider here the mean curvature of this uh, geodesic sphere. Obviously, the geodesic sphere uh, uh, changes when we change uh, uh, the, nor the unit uh, normal eta. And of course, when we are changing the, the point. As a corollary, from the, our general Hoft type result. Uh, uh, the geodesic spheres of the manifold can be classified in terms of their mean curvature. For that, uh, consider an immersed sphere, sigma, consider an immersed sphere, here in, in the picture, in black, uh, an immersed sphere. And for assume that uh, at any uh, point P of uh, the immersed sphere, uh, we consider uh, it's normal. Uh, we assume that the mean curvature of our immersed sphere at this point 
correspond to the same mean curvature of the unique uh, tangent geodesic sphere at this at the same point. At this point, this uh, geodesic sphere in blue and our uh, immersed sphere in black ha have the same mean curvature. If this happens along our immersed sphere, the sphere must be in fact a geodesic sphere. This is the, the consequence. Observe that uh, in fact, in, again, this is the, uh, the classical Hopf theorem. This is the classical Hopf theorem when we consider uh, the, uh, the, as ambient space, the Euclidean three space and uh, the class of a geodesic sphere that are around a sphere of a certain constant radius along the, the manifold. Okay, uh, I'm going, uh, finally, I'm going to, to comment, only comment, uh, also an extension of the previous result for positive uh, constant extrinsic curvature to homogeneous spaces with uh, a group of isometries of uh, dimension four. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to in, enter in, in details, but uh, the homogeneous uh, spaces with a group of isometry of dimension four can be classified in terms of the of two constant, uh, normally called uh, kappa and tau, uh, it is shown in, the, in this table. Here we have a H2 cross R. Uh, this is not, well, this is not the, it is the Euclidean space, but it is not really in the, in the table. Uh, S2 cross R uh, and these other spaces, okay? The Heisenberg, Heisenberg space, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, a global parametrization of the space uh, can be given in this form. Okay, uh, here uh, you can see the, the constant kappa and tau. This is a global parametrization when uh, the ambient uh, kappa, the, the constant kappa is less than or, or equal to zero. And it is almost global when kappa is positive. Almost global means that if we are in S2 cross R, it's a parametrization of S2 minus one point cross R. And in the case of Berger sphere, this is a parametrization of uh, the, the, the universal cover of the Berger sphere minus a, a fiber, minus a circle. Okay. In these uh, spaces, the important fact in these spaces uh, for for me is that uh, rotations around the set axis are isometries. So uh, this uh, allows us to study the rotational example and obtain the following result. Uh, any immersed uh, sphere in the uh, space uh, with the constant extrinsic curvature equal to a positive constant C must be rotational. In fact, uh, in addition, these spheres exist for every uh, value C, positive value C, and they are embedded if the ambient space is not a Berger sphere. As I said previously, this result was uh, proven in space form by Lipman and also by Spina, Rosenberg uh, and me in, in the product space H2 and S2 cross R. Here in the pictures, uh, this is a picture in the Heisenberg group. You can see uh, a picture of the of constant, uh, uh, constant strictly curvature surfaces spheres in this case. And here you can see uh, a non-embedding, a uh, non-embedded uh, example in, uh, in the case of uh, Berger, sphere, Berger spheres. In this case, 
in, uh, for Bayer sphere, there are some examples that are not embedded. And here, after a projection into R3, you can see uh, more or less a, a, an idea of uh, the behavior of the, the sphere. It is rotational, and this is the, the curve that you, have, you must uh, rotate. Uh, okay, uh, that's all. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Jose. A very interesting talk. Uh, anyone say comments? Uh, that time, may I? Yes, yeah, sure. Great. Uh, thank you, that time. Uh, and uh, thank you, Jose, for a very nice talk. Um, yeah, um, I vaguely remember um, Pablo mentioned these ideas, similar ideas to me about five or ten years ago. So um, it must be, I guess you've been thinking about this for some time, so it must be quite gratifying to have got this very nice result and very elegant proof um, uh, out, out of these ideas. But I noticed so the 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 the, the technique is very two dimensional. So yes. is 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 there any hope? You know where I'm coming from. Is there any, is there any hope of extending this to um, hypersurfaces and higher dimensional spaces? I suppose that uh, it is not possible. Uh, in, for instance, in R four or in general in the Euclidean space with dimension bigger than uh, bigger than three, you you have a uh, a sphere, a CMC a sphere, well, CMC a sphere uh, with a codimension one, that uh, they are not uh, round spheres. Right. So, right. in general, we cannot expect that this result is true in higher dimension. What if you impose convexity? Well, if you have a convexity, maybe. Uh, uh, for instance, for uh, if you have a, the the assumption that you have a ellipticity, uh, you can use a reflection principles in some mm -hmm. ta sometimes. Mm -hmm. It is not, of course, it is not true in a general manifold, of yeah. course. But in the Euclidean three space, well, in a space, you can use uh, reflections, and uh, the the result can be obtained using this technique. Mm -hmm. Okay. I noticed as well that um, I think you could probably use your same your result also to characterize uh, the um, spheres uh, constructed by uh, Packard and uh, Shin, I believe. Um, so at the end of the talk, you mentioned that you could characterize uh, small geodesic spheres by their mean curvature. You know the Packard and Shin they character uh, they construct. Um, as an extension of Rougangui's construction, small spheres of um, small spheres of constant mean curvature and of prescribed mean curvature. So you can also characterize these spheres using the same argument. Uh -huh. Okay, I I didn't know. <laughs> it's a nice paper. It's a nice paper. Well worth the read. Uh, it's Picard, and I believe the, his co-author is Shin, but I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Grant. Anybody have more questions? I have a question. So if not, I have. Okay, uh, sure. <laughs> oh, Jose Antonio, I, I got lost in the proof when you split the the Lorentzian form in two parts, a blue part and a, and a red part. I yes. didn't really understand the re here. I, I, here, I didn't understand the, the relation between Q and the other point when you put the the blue vector. How how we, what is uh, second fundamental form S? I, I don't know because I, I understood that lambda was the second fundamental form of the trust of the S. Yes, the is tangent. Not true? Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, here, uh, the tensor sigma. 
is given by the second fundamental form of the immersed sphere in, here in the picture in black mm -hmm. and uh, the second fundamental form of the sphere well uh, the the surface in the transitive family here in blue so we try to compare uh, the uh, the second fundamental form using the uh, the following argument we consider the second fundamental form when they are seen from here from let's say from the tangent uh, space and we don't compare directly the sec this second fundamental form but we compare the second fundamental form of the surface uh, here in black with the second fundamental form here in the uh, in the surface s they uh, projecting at the same point in the tangent uh, plane let's say and this is the red part the second fundamental form of the surface uh, of the sphere sigma minus the second fundamental form of the surface in red and later we compare the second fundamental form of s this uh, surface in red with the second fundamental form of the surface in blue this is because this term is very easy to control due to the fact that both surfaces the red one and the blue one belong to the transitive family and it is not yeah, and it is easy to control the difference between the black and red uh, surfaces uh, around q this is uh, well we can co uh, control this part and later this other part that it is easy to to see uh, how to to control okay i don't know uh, if it, uh, this explains uh, no my problem was was I, I didn't know the relation between this you you put two points q here and the other point on the right when you compare what mm -hmm. is the relation between these two points this q and this one yes well uh, i mean i'm trying to compare uh, around q this is one point around q ah, okay this but, a, but any close. point yes close it is uh, supposed that uh, everything is closed ah okay that that yeah, was my picture. my question ah sorry <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know how would you measure that yeah okay 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 and the, yes. i have another question if you can apply the result maybe it's a silly question you can apply the result for for surfaces uh, whose in, in R three surfaces whose mean curvature depends on the height function. Just one the function. On the you height, know, function. height function. You know, we, we talk about that problem. Yes, years but ago. The, yes, yes. <laughs> but the problem is that you must have a transitive family. That's the point. You, do yes, we have? Then, yes. No, in general, we don't know the system of the transitive family. So that problem no. is still open? Yes, yes, it is okay. still open. Okay, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I feel better. <laughs> okay, <laughs> even, even that, uh, this is a nice talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice questions. So, some more comments or questions? No. no. Okay. Speaker again. Thank you very much. Thank you.